We're live? Why didn't no one tell me we're going live? Oof. Hello everyone, Toaster here, your third most favorite news correspondent here at Toaster Gaming News. And oh boy, do we have an exclusive story for you today. We here at TGN have been granted an all-inclusive, exclusive tour of the ever-so-famous home base, aka Outpost Toast, from the recent global sensation that's sweeping the fix-it corporate cable network. Satisfying satisfactory story! Taking us through this magnificent feat of engineering will be our very own Massage 2ABB field correspondent, Chuck DeBabe. Chuck! Are you there, Chuck? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here, Toast. Ah, there you are, Chuck. We thought we lost you for a second. Well, Chuck, what can you tell us about this tour today? Well, Toast, I think I speak for all of us here when I say that it is truly an honor and a privilege to be granted exclusive access to this incredible facility. From what I've seen so far, it is an extremely intricate structure, and I just can't wait to see how all these complex systems come together. Is there any reason why you're standing T-pose, Chuck? Uh, it, well, it's a bit chilly out, and I forgot my coat. <laughs> you're a weirdo, Chuck. Well, she's all yours. Take it away, pal. Well, don't just stand there, Chuck. Say something. Oh, yes. Well, this structure that's behind me, the ever-so-famous Outpost Toast, is an intricate organism of interweaving systems that is responsible for satisfying all of the needs of a fixit employed pioneer. It has a massive interior with just tons and tons of storage space. It features a large garage, a train station, drone ports, and it even features cutting-edge advancements in coffee production. But with that out of the way, we'll be starting our journey over here, just outside of the base at this here train station. This train station features three separate freight platforms that, from what I'm told, serve absolutely no purpose. Now, they are hooked up to the base's internal item sorter, but from what I'm told, the owner of the space concluded that he could not travel between other train stations scattered around the world without unintentionally loading unnecessary resources onto his freight cars, meaning that his plan of using his own personal train as extra storage space could not work as intended, and this train station serves no other purpose other than just being a simple destination station when using trains as a taxi service. Now, moving around to the outside of the structure, we'll find the plaza just at the front of the building, and from here, we can conclude that the owner has no shame or humbleness behind him as he blatantly gloats to the rest of the world of his mediocre achievements by presenting his bronze, silver, and gold trophies on these ridiculously oversized pillars. But from what we can see here is that despite these despicably arrogant achievements, he still fails to hold the golden nut, which I can confirm is in fact the most golden of all nuts. And unlike these three pathetic participation awards here, is a trophy that has to actually be earned. Wow, Chuck, you seem awfully fixated on those trophies there. Some may even say... Jealous. Reporter of the Year award was rightfully mine, Toast. I've won a fair and square, Chuck. We've been over this. Now do your job. Urgh. Moving on. Just behind this fence over here, we can find a backup generator system, which, based on my calculations, can in no way, shape, or form provide any amount of adequate power to the base. And this suspicion is subsequently confirmed by this sign here, stating that all of the subsystems of this facility must be shut down or else it will trip the fuse in this base. Whoever designed this backup generator system clearly has no idea what they're doing. Now that we've explored the outside of this structure, let's go over a few brief details of it before heading into the garage. This base has a rather brutalist design to it, and that was due to the limited amount of decorative buildables available to the Pioneer at the time. So clearly, this base must have been designed somewhere between Fix-It's third or fourth rollout. There are three floors to the structure, and it features a garage at the first floor, a storage facility and item sorter at the second floor, and finally the command center and the hub structure at the top floor. Moving into the garage now, we can see that there are three separate truck stations, and at each truck station, we have some of the finest vehicles from Fix-It's fleet. Now, all of these vehicles here would be great methods of personal transportation if it were not for the quite idiotic placement of this structure, being crammed between the Fixmas Village and the Doggo Jerky Factory, and being literally built on a cliff. Effectively meaning that there is no possible way to drive one of these vehicles away from the space no matter which direction you go. Clearly, the person who built this structure does not think things through. Now, these truck stations get refueled by batteries, and I've been told that there is a drone port not at this base, but at the super storage facility that is solely responsible for distributing batteries all across the world. 
Now, at this base, there is a drone delivery port set up here that accepts the deliveries of those batteries from the super storage, and it then distributes it to these truck stations to keep these vehicles fully fueled. And finally, the truck station's resource outputs are hooked up to the base's item sorter, which we'll take a closer look at in just a bit. Hey, uh, Chuck, uh, you want to go ahead and address the elephant in the room? Or whatever the heck you call that thing? Ah, uh, yes, I'm glad you pointed that out. I'm sure it's the first thing you noticed here when we walked into the garage, and I mean it's just so glaringly obvious, out of place and in your face, that you really couldn't miss it. That's right, it's the factory cart dispenser over here. Uh, that's not what I meant, Ch Yes, this system right here is hooked up to a storage container that is fully stocked with factory carts. Simply just walk up to the dispenser, snag one for yourself, and now you've got your hands on Fix-It's most efficient form of transportation at no charge to you. Let's take a stroll into the hallway over here. And we can see the hypertube elevator system next to the stairwell, and right next to that we also have our light controls, which has been set to this hideous magenta color to contrast the blindingly bright cyan color of the building. I can only assume that this is intentional, and draws the conclusion that the owner of this facility has fallen into a deep delusional temptation of 80s synthwave. Uh, hold on there just a second, Chuck. Seeing you in that pink light, I can only notice that those breasts of yours are getting quite plump. Well, Toast, you know how conscious I am of my weight, and I'm pretty sure that also warrants a formal complaint. <laughs> well, Chuck, you can submit that formal complaint directly to HR, and I'll be sure that it goes into the shredder along with your next paycheck. But don't let me hold you up there, Chuck. Let's keep it going. I hate this job. Yes, let's hop into this hypertube elevator and take it up to the second floor so we can get a closer look at this storage room. Here you can see that this storage room is well stocked with all the necessities. Just a few tools and equipment pieces that a pioneer would need to replenish their supply if they were to undergo an unfortunate accident. Along with a few other oddities and some flora like mycelia and pale berries as well, which I believe would be used to craft medicinal inhalers. Also on this floor we have the item sorter here, which actually works in quite an interesting way. As stated here on the front of the item sorter, key items will be returned and all other resources will get shipped over to the super storage facility. So equipment like oddities and flora will get returned to you right over here at the item return window. But everything else will get sent into this second drone port out here. Now if you'll remember we have a battery delivery drone port on the one side, but this second drone port on the other side will take those items that come out of the sorter and it will ship those items over to the super storage facility. From there, they will either get sorted into their respective storage slot, or they will get sent into an awesome sink if there's no other room for them. Even more so than that, that same drone there will also take certain items from the super storage facility and bring them back here to the base. It will then go through this base's item sorter and it will sort those key items into the item return. And if we go over to this item return window here, we can already see that it is rather thoroughly stocked with such items. Wow, that's some great stuff there, Chuck. But could that item sorter sort out that mess of a divorce you're going through? I'm probably never going to see my kids again, Toast. Ah, jeez, Chuck, I'm sorry. That was a low blow. Uh, uh, please continue. Yes, uh, finally, moving up to the top floor, we're brought into this window-clad room that features some workbenches for handheld tinkering, a MAM for planetary-based research, and lastly, fix its awesome shop. Fix it reminds all employees that there's absolutely no refunds that has been corporately mandated to be installed conveniently within 20 feet of every Pioneer's hub base. Taking a walk up this ramp, we have a window to an awesome sink, which allows the base owner to easily grab his hard-earned scripts, which I surprisingly have to admire as it is especially convenient during inclement weather. Taking a step outside, we can see that we have a radar tower just soaring above us, which the base owner no doubt uses to seamlessly upload mediocre and unfunny videos to YouTube at lightning fast speeds. Down this ramp, we can find a watchtower off to the side so that you can just get an absolutely incredible view of this busy interweaving mess of factories. Right out in front, we can find the to-do list of shame, which is chock full of terrible half-finished ideas. This list is conveniently located next to the hub, so it's the first thing you see taunting you in the morning and the last thing you see berating you at night. At least we can confirm that the base owner has cried at least once. But I think that this should be set to yellow for in progress, because from what I've seen of his worth ethic so far, I don't think he's cried enough. And finally, we have the hub structure itself right over here, which I'm pretty sure speaks for itself. But in this hub in particular is one of the most cutting edge coffee machines that I've ever had the honor of witnessing. Discreetly installed directly into the fridge is a coffee dispenser. Just stick your cup in and voila, delicious boiling hot but watered down coffee. Also, there's a moose. 
But that brings us to the end of this exclusive tour. Just what an absolutely amazing feat of engineering, Toast. I am blown away. Well, thank you for that, Chuck. It's always great to get these exclusive opportunities. Now, coming up later, we have... Uh, hey, uh... What are you doing over there, uh... Chuck? <laughs> Don't mind me, Toast. I'm catching an early flight back to the studio. I'd be careful on that if I were you, Chuck. Everything is okay. I have been advised that this is perfectly safe. I would advise that you do not get on that drone, Chuck. There's no need to worry. I've done this before. Oh, hang on there, Chuck. Oh, I can't watch. I'll see you in just a moment. Ah! Chuck! Chuck! Can you hear me, Chuck? C cut the feed! Cut the feed! Did he just... Yeah. Jesus, that's the third time this week. Ugh. Listen, I'm sure he's fine. Unlike our insurance premiums. Well, I do hope that you enjoyed our exclusive tour of the famous Satisfying Satisfactory Story home base. That sure was, uh, something, wasn't it? <clears throat> Be sure to join us for our 8 p.m. segment, where I go one-on-one -on -one in an exclusive interview with Ashley Schnitzelshue, one of the pets protesters involved in the recent doggo jerky factory break-in. Um, I just think that doggos are friends, not food. Is there any reason why you're standing T-pose, Ashley? Um... God, this network's going downhill. Well, I do hope that you enjoyed this TGN exclusive. As always, I've been Toaster. Peace out.